Good evening, fellow dear friends, men and men of good will and of good conscience. This is Philip Diafala presentation on this evening of the 9th of November 2019. We are live from London. I'm reaching you with every amount of certainty wherever I on this planet Earth. We are gathering in the name of the most high God, Chukuokike, he who sees the and the open, the mighty one in battle. We ask him to descend in his majesty power and his mighty valor to envelop in each and every one of us wherever we are, individual and collectively, to go before us, to go beside us, go behind us, to be on the driving seat, to drive home this audacious quest for restoration of Biafra, that in the end, not only that we prevail, but Biafra shall be restored in our lifetime. He shall be our beginning and the end this month of November, the remaining part of month of month of November, the month of December, the main part of 2019, and beyond shall be the most successful, the most progressive, the most history ever for us. Every pit hole, every pothole dog, every snare of the enemy against us shall turn into their own grave. You shall set confusion into the camp of our enemies. You shall continue to torment them. May the spirit of our galangos and heroines who have paid the ultimate price on this, our divine journey for restoration, continue to haunt our enemies, and especially those who are very much complicit in their death. You shall never be well with them. Be afraid shall be restored in our lifetime because if he has not, being for the sacrifices of these are men, these are our women, these are our brothers and sisters, our comrades. We will not be where we are today. Because of what they have done, the foundation of the contraption called Nigeria has been shaken. And the center can no longer hold. There is serious confusion along the corridors of power. And we ask the Most High God to sustain that confusion in their lives. Do this for us now. Give us victory and take the glory. That the rest of humanity will see your blessings upon our lives. 
and continue to glorify your holy name. To this we say a man and a man and a man. He say, he say, he say, my name is Richard Mel, for I am the deputy leader of indigenous of your farm for my battery. Abalete is in the Demi Demi Soman Baraman Bri is in Biafaland. I am here in a deputizing capacity standing for a great number of Nam the Kanu, arguably the best of his own kind and his own time. The enigmatic, the charismatic Mazin Nam the Kanu has indeed destroyed that hellish Lugadian contraption called Nigeria. And they have no choice. All we need to do is to stand by his side to make sure that this gospel is indeed concluded and that Biafra is ultimately restored. We are not going to hand this button over to our brothers and sisters who are coming behind us and in fact generations of Biafra to come or to our children. We shall complete this task the only compensation to be paid and to be made and to be worthwhile is for this effort of our gallant heroes and heroines to be compensated in a way that will see the ultimate destruction of the zoo called Nigeria and the restoration of Biafra. What am I saying? The only thing that can compensate for the ultimate sacrifice of our brothers and sisters is that Biafra is restored on their behalf and in their honor. We have no apologies to render. This evening, we are as always going to do the needful, to preach this gospel as much as we can. We want to use the opportunity to salute the courage of our eminent brothers and sisters all the way from different parts of the zoo called Nigeria and who have remained very resolute, very focused, and never allowed any distraction to come to them. We are not forgetting our brothers and sisters in Biafaland who are under rain and shine, undergoing different degrees of pains and difficulties. We appreciate all of you. We are not forgetting the family members of our departed brethren. You shall be well with all of them, and we must stand in solidarity with all of them any day, any time. We must help one another, we must stand by one another to make sure that we ultimately win together. And if we are to fail, we are going to fail together. We salute our friends who are rendering unimaginable assistance, making sure that Biafra is once again put on the world stage. That unimportant assignment, that effort is still in progress. And as time goes on, of course, you will be convinced that the leadership of IPOB is not keeping quiet. We are moving. The journey has been tortuous. It has not been that easy and we have not pretended that it has been. But in the end, the spirit of Biafra shall prevail, and ultimately, we shall indeed coast home safely. All we need is to remain resolute and focused, because this journey is gradually coming to an end. We have done more than 80% of this work. The remaining 20% or thereabout remains the most difficult and that is the stage where we are and that is why all hands must be on deck that everything we need to do should be done there are those who are running in this journey on this journey to ultimate restoration of Biafra there are those who are working there are those who are talking there are those who are contributing financially there are those who are using their intellectual ability to do whatever they can to make sure that this gospel of reservation is put on the front bar. Our enemies dealt with us for the past 50 years. They have arguably wanted to decimate what is left of us. 
But the Most High God has, at this particular point in time, at this age, in our lifetime, brought somebody like Mazenam the can forward. Despite all the sacrifices, despite all the intimidation on his way, he remained resolute. He remained more than ever before committed. May the souls of our gallant heroes and heroines who have fallen short on this journey continue to rest in the bosom of Most, most High God. May the soul of our mother, the mother of all mothers, Nesali Ugeze Okukan, continue to rest in the bosom of the Most High God until we all meet to part no more. Their death remains the reason why you will continue to do what you are doing. Why we must complete this journey. Why this race must be consummated, if you like. And IPOB has done obviously why in this direction. But we must not rest on our oars because we still have enormous responsibilities on our shoulders. And that is why we will continue to do what we can. People are asking us, what have you done? What can you do and all that? And these are the agents of the zoo called Nigeria. They are in our midst. Do not make mistake about it. They are pretending to be IPOB family members as well. They come in and out of us. They mingle with us and among us. And they pretend that they are one with us. But one of the greatest weapons we have against them is that our hands are clean and that there is nothing that they can take out of us. There is nothing secret about us. What has propelled us forward has been the courage, the truth that we have continued to propel. And we do not have any intention to prevaricate, neither are we going to capitulate until what we are looking for is given to us. It is very important that at this particular point in time, we need to do something. And that thing we need to do, having experienced the most horrendous terrorism directed against us by the House of Fulani, by the zoo authorities, and through the complicit criminal connivance of some unscopable politicians in Biafaland. The atrocity has been too many, and it is now time for us to do the needful. Our advice to our brothers and sisters in Biafaland, going forward and even with regard to what has happened in the past, since 2015 is to make sure that nobody, nobody who has suffered on our journey to this ultimate restoration is left behind. If you have been tortured in any way, if you have been maimed in any way, if you have been imprisoned or even detained in any way, it is your responsibility to come forward and give evidence of what has happened to you. A lot of our people are intimidated that most of them are running away. I don't know why they are so fearful. Because if we don't come forward to present our case to the international community, if we don't come forward to present our case to international criminal court, then we don't have evidence to present. They will say that we have been enjoying ourselves, they will say that nothing has happened to us. That is why we are calling on our people, on our principal servants, especially those in Biafaland, on our coordinators, at the national, at the state, at the senatorial level, or local government, and at the zonal as well as at the unity levels to make sure that everybody who has been injured, everybody who has been imprisoned, everybody who has been tortured, everybody who has been killed, that 
they come forward or that their friends or that the witnesses that saw what happened to them or that their family members come forward because we are going to be sending important delegation to our people how this information is going to be passed and collected we are going to let you know they have killed us enough nobody should be afraid of what will happen tomorrow because whether you come out or you don't come out they are still going to come after you therefore we need to do this work what are we saying here it is time for accountability that the zoo officials that the Fulani terrorists in army and police uniform and their masters we answer to the atrocities that they committed against the Biafran people. Do not come and ask me how and why. Now is the time for us to do the needful. We are going to pass important message to our principal servants and to our family members in Biafran. Do not run away if any of our family members have disappeared. It is the responsibility of each and every one of us, and especially those who know the person to come forward and give evidence. It is not fake account. We are not going to accept it for avoidance of doubt. Do not think that coming forward to present fake account or fake narrative of what happened or what you think has happened will get us to anywhere. We are not going to accept it. Every case that has been brought before the international community must be scrutinized, must be verified, must be investigated. So do not even try to concord any case or to concord any incident and come forward with it. We want justice by all means, but we must do it the right way. I don't know how else I'm going to say, uh, say this, but our people must be very vigilant, must be very careful. Our people in a boy at the present time who are undergoing different degrees of horror and intimidation from the murderous fallen terrorists in army and police uniform must not sleep. You must be ready to give an account of what you have seen and what has happened to you. If it is for our family members who have died in the process, we are encouraging their family members to come forward. Do not run away. Do not be intimidated because even if you do, they will still come for you. There is no going back. People think that we are doing nothing. But we shall indeed demonstrate to them that we are doing something. And nobody, no life lost on this journey to restoration shall be in vain. Very important. We are asking for people to cooperate because there is no going back. All those who have had their hands directly or indirectly I mean the saboteurs in Biafaland. At the appropriate time and very soon, they are not going to go scot-free. Mark our words today. We have said to you that the heart of this project shall never be allowed to see corruption. And we mean every syllable, every word, every sentence in it. This is a live broadcast this evening. We have to move on to another topic, very important. Not necessary topic, we're passing information to our people. We're passing information that things we need to do should be done, and not only that it is done, it will be done properly and accordingly. We need to be asking ourselves at this particular point in time, what is it for us in Biafran struggle? Why are you coming to? this struggle why are you involved in this struggle are you coming here for merriment or are you coming here that biafra be restored you need to ask yourself that very important question you need to ask yourself why the international community 
why the outside world has not responded to our cry for several decades. You need to ask yourself, why is it that our people have been killed, they are still killing us, they are still maiming us, the world is seeing what is happening to us, but they have kept quiet. But in other parts of the zoo called Nigeria, in other parts of the world, war criminals are being, uh, are being brought to account. They are being prosecuted. The killings in Middle Belt are being taken care of. The killings in the core northern area enclave is being taken care of. In fact, those who even fought Boko Haram from Biafra land, because what they do is to recruit our people from Biafra land and send them to fight Boko Haram and without weapon, and then send Boko Haram terrorists that they have reintegrated into Nigerian army, into Nigerian police to Biafra land. You are all eyewitnesses to this. The people fighting Boko Haram in the northeast part of the zoo called Nigeria in Arewa Enclave, in Zambisa Forest in Borono, in Adamawa, and other parts of that northern hellish contraption called Nigeria are all people from Biafra land and people from Yoruba land and people from Middle Belt and they are not giving them any weapons to fight Boko Haram. Yet, every year, yet every month, yet every quarter of the year, the zoo government will always hoodwink the international community and international aid donors to donate billions of dollars in cash and in kind pretending to be fighting Boko Haram, pretending to be wiping away Boko Haram. But Boko Haram is still rampaging. They are deceiving themselves. But in Biafra land, where nothing is happening, Biafra land that is very peaceful, is militarized, our people are being molested, our people are being kidnapped, our people are being pillaged or rather our resources, and then the politicians in our land are doing nothing about it. The so-called Fulani terrorists, the fifth most dangerous terrorist as recorded by the terrorism index all over the world, are being sent to different government houses in Biafra land, in Anambra, the monster in Anambra government house, will you be honor, told you what these people are going to do. They are part and parcel of Anambra state government. And especially in the area of security, they have unfettered, unrestricted access to government houses. In Enugu state, it's the same thing. They started even before Anambra, in a Boeing, the same thing. And if you say the same people will be saying, oh, you are, you are making it up. We are not making it up because the governor of Anambra State, that monster, that drunkard, that blood sucker, that ritualist, Willie Obiano, was implicated by the spirit of the land by the spirit of those that he murdered. And he made that confession thinking that he was making an announcement and put a price of 500,000 on the lives of our people. And then by implication empowered fallen terrorists to continue to kill our people. After all, human life is that cheap. If you kill, you pay 500,000. And that 500,000 Naira he is talking about is 
very huge amount of money earmarked by the Fulani controlled federal government of Nigeria. That money is there, billions of worthless naira, and they are going to spend it. On the other hand, some people are jubilating, but you don't know that what these people are doing is that they have taken over the security of our land. The so-called Ruga, you're talking about the so-called Ruga settlement that we are protesting against has been effectively implemented because they struck deals with state governments. Mietiala struck deal. They have a momentum of understanding with state governments in different parts of Biafra land. So instead of coming frontly to do it, they have now stately and treacherously as well, in a quiet, devilish manner, used the state governments in Biafra land to implement Ruga. Instead of Fulani terrorists going to take over the land by themselves, it is now the state governments and their agents that will be buying the land for them. Are we lying? We are not lying. Because Will you be not confirmed it. About five months ago, there was a Reverend Father in Enugu when Fulani headsmen killed one of the Reverend Fathers and some uh, clergymen protested and went to a new government house. Somebody was saying, or rather thanking a uh, Fulani headsman, thanking Mietiala for protecting them. He was passing a message. That message he was passing is very clear. That Fulani headsmen are in charge of our security so even our vigilantes at community level, villages are not appreciated. They are paying for an enhancement to provide security for us and to protect our lives. The most dangerous ever since our existence. So if we are thinking that we are safe, we are not safe. We need to begin to do something. And our politicians must continue to be held accountable. We must remove sentiment in what we're doing. If your father is a traditional ruler, is a community leader, is a politician, is a senator, is a governor, or uh, one of the special assistants and all that, you must warn them. Because the spirit of the land is going to rise and destroy those who are perpetuating all this evil in our society. The spirits of those that were murdered in cold blood are asking for vengeance. This is Radio Beer for the presentation, and uh, I am not in a very usual position. This is a makeshift. Uh, situation or, uh, or location for me that we will do the need for. Fulani Hesmer has taken over our land. If we are still thinking that they are coming, they are already in our land and they have had a strong hold on that that has held us together. There is something that we must consider, and especially hardcore Biafrans. Every hardcore Biafran, especially those in abroad, and it is going to be across board as well, must consider denouncing the zoo citizenship. Nothing will happen. If we are all serious of getting Biafra, we must all denounce the zoo citizenship. The zoo citizenship is worthless. Our allegiance to Nigerian state has been the reason why the Biafra Restoration Project has been prolonged 
without us knowing it. Because some of the questions that they are asking us, and which some zoo people are asking us is, which passport are you using and all that? But of course we know that we are under occupation. But even at that, we must have to do something. Across board, we must have to bring out a date or a period of time in a coordinated way that people who are hard cause renounce the zoo citizenship. Until we renounce the zoo citizenship, nobody will take us seriously. Because if we don't do anything along that line, it means that we are complicit in what is happening to us. There are some courageous Biafrans in the diaspora that have renounced their zoo passport and citizenship. And they have not died, I can tell you. They have not died. If you are a hardcore Biafra and you are abroad, your life is in danger in the zoo called Nigeria. So you must have to do something very drastic to make sure that you get residence where you are. There are so many of our people who are working from morning till now. That is very fine to make ends meet. But they don't have papers. But because of selfishness, they attach themselves so much to the job that they are doing. The day they are caught, every of those efforts that they have made goes in vain. What am I saying here? There are some of our people who are in this part of the world, in Europe, in America, in Australia, in Asia, and I wouldn't say Africa, because you see zoo by extension, who are going about and they don't have residence permits. And you call yourself a Biafran. And you want to do it through the back door. It is not done by wishful thinking. If you want Biafra to protect you, you must have to come out and declare for Biafra openly. And I can assure you, Biafra shall not disappoint you. Go and ask those who have done it. We were the first set of people that did this. I am a living example. Therefore, I will not tell you anything that will derail you. Our people in diaspora, both those who have their residence, those who are citizens, those who have no papers at all must renounce the zoo citizenship. That is the only way that anybody, any foreign body, any government will take you seriously. Nothing will happen, I tell you. Rather, you will get protected as an endangered person, as somebody whose life is in danger. For our people who are in the contraption called Nigeria, you will be taken as somebody who is under occupation. And until we, until we courageously do this, nobody will take us seriously. And so we must have to think seriously about this. We must have both emotional and physical separation from the zoo called Nigeria. It has to be seen to be done for us to advance to another level. Because the argument of the international community is that you are all Nigerian citizens and that you are still enjoying the benefit of being part of Nigerian Federation. And how can you demonstrate that you are no more part of the zoo called Nigeria? You have to come out in the open and make public pronouncement. There is no going back. Nothing will happen. They may put us in more difficulties 
But I can assure you that there is no difficulty that these people will put us through that will be more than what they have put us now. The only people who will be thinking or kicking against what we are saying here at the moment are one Nigerian is who are thinking that somehow and someday the zoo will get better. The zoo will never get better. You will be used as sacrificial lamb. You will continue to be a guinea pig experiment in the zoo called Nigeria until you begin to do something. All over the world, people who were very much conversant with what self-determination is all about, people who have passed through the Bration struggle and emerged victorious. Nobody is. Go and ask the people of South Sudan. Go and ask our people who are citizens of other countries. Go and ask the people of East Timor. Go to the Balkans and ask them what they did. They courageously renounced the citizenship of the occupation parent country that is dominating them. And they declared mass protests. They declared, they went on strike. Their civil servants did. Their politicians did. Their businessmen did. Their students did. And so until we coordinate our effort along this line, the zoo called Nigeria will never take us seriously, even though IPB has shaken them, and there's no going back. We must go a step further to completing this job. Because in the Omega in hell, these people have dealt with us. And they are thinking that we are playing. They are thinking that we are just backing like uh, 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 frustrated individuals. We need to do something. Very important. We need to do something along this line. And if we don't do it, we will have ourselves to blame. Nobody is holding Biafra from coming. We are the people, the people of Biafra, the people holding Biafra from coming because we have not done essentially what we need to do. The world has moved forward. This is a 21st century. This is a digital age. And everything is changing. And therefore, we will not be that conservative as to remain in the past. We must acknowledge that circumstances are changing and that we need to continue to improvise and adapt. That is why we are peer friends. That is why we shall continue to set the agenda for the contraption called Nigeria. Our people who want to do this should begin to make contact. Our people who want to take this struggle to another level should begin to make contact. Because we need to renounce the zoo for what it is. Go and ask the Kurds in Iraq what they are doing, and Iran what they are doing. There are thousands, if not billions, of them who are stateless persons. And anywhere they go, they are recognized. We need to take this struggle to another level, even though we are on a diplomatic shuttle and we have gone to a level that we're not going to go back anymore. People will continue to ask us, what have you done? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And we are telling them proudly that at this stage, we owe nobody no explanation. Let them go and hang themselves. They will be rest assured that the leadership of IPOB as constituted at the moment is not going to lead you astray.
or disappoint you. And the heart of this project we continue to vow shall never be allowed to see corruption. They will come against us, they will intimidate us. They will kill us, they will try to maim us. But in the end, we shall prevail. Anybody that see that man, that servant of the Most High God, Mazin Namde Kanu, must continue to salute him, must continue to pay homage to his courage, to his resilience, to his commitment, despite all the intimidation and danger. Because this journey we have embarked upon, a lot of people did not know that we will be where we are today. The zoo underestimated the resolve behind this journey that we have embarked upon. Because they thought that somehow they're going to bribe them. Somehow they're going to intimidate them. Somehow they will be like those who have come before them. And we have proved them wrong. And we shall continue to prove them wrong. This is really a beautiful presentation. I uh, will begin to take call at this particular point in time. And the number to call is plus 447405964146. Plus 447405964146. Once again, plus 447405964146. That's the number to call. If you call this number, we shall take your call otherwise we shall proceed to give way to other people from different parts of the world our radio be a fire crew to of course usher in their own program i want to thank each and every one of our brothers and sisters who have continued to support this struggle we urge you to remain focused and resolved because times are different but we are not backing out saboteurs are in an almighty mess because the harder they come against us the harder they are disappointed the back in emily <laughs> Right, can you hear me? Call on the phone. Call on the phone. Can you hear me? Call on the phone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Just a minute, I don't know what's going on. Call on the phone, can you hear me now? Yeah, just, I can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, okay, go ahead, please. Where are you calling from? My name is Sunday Howo. I am a native of Mo. Mo is in the local government of Ebon State, Biafra. I'm calling you right now from Anambra State. 
thing there is uh, just one minute. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. But it's it's like we have lost. Um, go ahead. Let me see. Are you hearing me clear? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to greet you. I want to greet you, Roman DJ I want to thank you so much for being with us, for all you are doing for us. I also want to thank our leader, Namdekano, who sacrificed all he has in order for us to see this uh, my, bro my brother, just uh, just one minute because I think something is wrong with our connection here. Your voice is not going out. Your voice is not going out uh, to our radio at the moment, but I need to do something very uh, urgently. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Maybe the Facebook or our listeners will be hearing you. Go ahead. Okay, am I through now? Yes, go ahead. You are not coming on radio, but you are coming out on Facebook. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So I want, I want to thank our leader Nandikano for all he has been doing for us, for sacrifice, for sacrificing all he has for us to have our freedom without religion. So I want to thank him so much, and I want to ask everybody, all their friends. Let us retire. Let us continue pushing ahead. Let us continue pushing. Until one day something will happen, and I believe that something must surely happen. What of we course, are there's no going back. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. All we, what we are doing is not a child play. It's not a. It's not like eating the love rice. But those who don't know may think that we are joking or we are playing. We are doing a serious thing. What we are doing is stronger than what was what happened in South Africa because South Africa never changed anything. They only fight to to see that they gain their their freedom in South Africa. But we are trying here in Nigeria to cover the Africa so people should not take us for granted or think that we are not serious for what we are doing. We are more than serious, and it's very difficult to find somebody like our leader Nandi Kano. All over the world. Or of course, the very difficult, yes. In a place like in Nigeria or Africa, but our leader still stands firm. So he knows that he wants our freedom. He is serious to give us our freedom. Upon all we are doing to him, upon punishment, doing all sorts of things, that's no problem. We are, we are following him and we must follow him to the end of this day. I myself have decided to follow struggle to the end. As long as God gave me life, as long as I live, I must follow this struggle to see the end of it. Because I started it so early in myself. Until I found out that myself has no structure to bring up Biafra. I decamped from them and rejoined I build it. And then now I am with I build it. And I believe that I will most surely reach to the end of this thing. I will most surely reach to the Biafra. I want to say the word, this, the, the dream I had about Diafra. I saw Diafra in dream, and this is how I saw it. I was in dream when I was passing somewhere in Awada, and... Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hearing you. So, yes, I saw well. a, view, a completed house. I saw a completed house in that dream. On top of the gate, the, the root on it, the Republic of Diafra. But inside that house, nobody is living in it. And the, at the entrance that led to that uh, the route, there were step by step difficult to fly in. Broken bottle, broken iron, so many difficulties, difficult things, so many hard things on the road, on the entrance that led to that house. But the house, nobody was living in it. And on top of it, they arrived the Republic of Biafra. And then when I woke up, I began to ask myself, I said, yes, all these things that I saw in dream are the difficulties that we are finding before reaching that Biafra. But surely, in dream, in spiritual world, in spiritual realm, the Biafra is real. So people should not think that Biafra will not come. Biafra will come. It is only the time. It will only take who, who says that Biafra will not come? The person is hallucinating. Biafra shall come in our lifetime, and there is no intention. 
to retreat another hour, we're going to capitulate. Can you hear me? Next call on the phone. Good evening from here. Welcome to the Good program. Evening, yes, sir. W welcome to the program. Go ahead. Good evening, sir. Yes, can't you hear me? Go ahead. Hello, good evening. You are listening to the radio. You should be hearing me. Hello? Unbelievable. Can't you hear me? Our radio is not on now, but uh, we are on Facebook for abundance of doubt. We are on Facebook. I'm not sure what is going on. But we'll try and do something very drastic. Very, very drastic. Uh, the number to call remains was 4474 plus four four seven four seven five zero uh, somebody saying I should write it on the screen I uh, will have to do that but I cannot guarantee because of the circumstance now I'm doing something I want to make sure that everything is uh, uh, going accordingly I don't know what's going on call on the phone can you hear me can you hear me Yes, sir. Welcome to the program. Hello. Something is wrong. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Good evening from here. Good evening from here. Can you hear me? Hello. Good evening from here. Good Hello. evening. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay. My name is Ishoko Jacob. I'm calling from Abaka. My name, yes, I can hear you. My name is Ishoko Jacob, calling from Abakaliki Province. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I can hear you very loud and clear. My name is Ishoko Jacob, calling from Abakaliki Province. I really don't understand. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, um, we must continue, of course. Call on the phone. Can you hear me? Hello. Good evening from here. Go ahead. My goodness. The Tinana Hard Walk. Is working on Facebook and you should be hearing me. I don't know what is going on, to be honest. Can you hear me? Call on the phone. Hello, good evening, sir. My name is Ishoko Jacob. I'm calling from Abakaliki Province. I'm hearing you very loud and clear. Right, thank you very much. Go ahead. I'm hearing you loud and clear, stay loud and clear. This is, go ahead then. I can hear you as well. This is uh, ready to be a follow up presentation. We try and do, we want to do things. Not sure why our broadcast from London is being disrupted. Most times, can you hear me? Call on the phone. It's gone, and we will try and do something very drastic here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Of course, I am going to come back in no time. I will be back in five minutes. But for now, I have to disengage. I will have to disengage. Very important. <laughs> 